Hi everyone. Um, this evening, uh, for a bit of a change, I am playing um, Memoir Forty Four, and I'm playing one of the Winter Wars scenarios. I've got the Winter Board and the Winter Wars expansion here, and it's uh, scenario number five, which took place on December twenty to twenty third, nineteen forty four. Uh, it is <clears throat> a couple of key things. Uh, and really, I, just, I, I got it out because I wanted to play something quite quickly. Um, I need this table cleared by the end of the evening. And I haven't played Memoir 44 in a while. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's get it out on the table. Um, so, things of note. Um, these are half tracks here. I don't actually have the half track models. So you get the little counter to show the half tracks. We've got quite a few um, German... Uh, uh, elite divisions and I, I'm guessing looking at the historical background they are representing the 2nd SS Panzer Division there are also some Volksgrenadiers which would be the infantry uh, the Germans have got some artillery units they've got a mortar so there are special rules for the mortar um, the, uh, the allies with the Americans have got some Shermans. I think these uh, the infantry are airborne in this uh, historical scenario from memory. And the key objective is this crossroads here. So if the Germans occupy, uh, let me just see how many is. Uh, basically, if they occupy all three town hexes at the crossroads, which would be one, two, three, then we go into a, a, a sudden death instance. So the Allies have got to stop them from getting those. Germans are going to try and take them. It is a six medal game. Uh, what else have we got? We've got winter combat and winter weather, which I, which will take into effect. Um, basically, it means that the, uh, the armour <clears throat> can't move quite as far as normal. Uh, let me just have... I've got a card for it. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, winter weather... Armour and vehicles only move two hexes, unless they're on a road, and this is obviously the road sections here, in which case they can move three hexes. We've got some allied tank destroyers. I'm not sure from memory now, um, in this particular part of the of the battle, whether they would be M10s or maybe a Hel Hellcats, I'm not entirely sure. But they're just tank destroyers for the sake of this game. And oh, we've got some anti-tank guns, which we, which the scenario tells you to use the the eighty-eight counter. <clears throat> For those not familiar, the eighty-eight was a German anti-tank gun, but it's basically to show to symbolise that these are uh, anti-tank guns. And there are some special rules for those as well that you get a card for uh, heavy anti-tank guns. Um, stars hit on armour or vehicle. Mm, there you go. Uh, ignore terrain battle restrictions. Oh, they're pretty good. Um, so, uh, we've got those set up. Although I think, actually, you only meant... I'll double-check the rules. I think you only may be meant to have two models to represent those. I will double-double-check, actually. So, it's been a little while since I've played Memoir 44. So, But it's pretty quick to get back on... Toe. Actually, text took a little while to set up because there's a lot of terrain pieces on this particular scenario. And then what I'll do is I'll play a handful of uh, cards backwards and forwards. I'm playing it solo, so... <clears throat> and uh, then I'll do a quick sort of after-action, um, uh, you know, uh, overview of what happened, because this obviously game doesn't have turns like uh, like a lot of war games do. Um, and we'll see, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's, uh, it's, when I was 44, it's one of these games that... And it's, it's true as Command and Colours. Often... Once I've played quite a few war games that are sort of medium or higher end in complexity, I like to use these sort of games just to get onto the table quite quickly, even though it just take a little while to set up. That's part of the fun for me. Um, and then play quite quickly in an evening. And um, I've always enjoyed them. But I, I generally will always reach for a more a medium, <clears throat> medium complexity type game. Um, but I do try and get this to the table, you know, fairly... This under Command and Colors game, so yeah, looking forward to playing this this evening. And straight into the action after the first couple of hands. So the Germans moved this uh, uh, 
this uh, group of infantry here across this open terrain and took some massive casualties from doing so. And um, these Germans here on this sort of coming down this road also took some casualties. The Allies were looking and pulled a, a, a barrage card, which meant that they were able to target an enemy unit and roll four dice against it. And they targeted these panzers over here. Um, which have taken some casualties. A very lucky die roll there. And the Germans are starting to get into position. They've moved this mortar team into position. If they don't move, they'll be quite effective against these defensive positions here. And they are uh, saying with the artillery. Actually, I, I did realise that uh, the artillery is two models for for this game. Got myself confused, mixed up with the uh, commanding colours Napoleonics. Which tends to have sort of uh, three, I think. Is it three? Oh, I can't remember now. Um, more, I'll say, um, artillery. And then on this side, the Germans engaged the tank destroyers and started to inflict some casualties on that tank destroyer. The tank destroyers are quite interesting. They're not terribly effective against infantry, as you'd expect. Um, you need to be used shooting. You need to be using them against um, the uh, the enemy panzers. So uh, yeah. But straight into the action, good stuff. So both sides have already started taking some losses. And these uh, Germans here just cut to ribbons out in the open. Um, the same with the unit on the um, on the road there. Just cut, cut to shreds. Massive casualties. Conversely, the Germans on this side of the battle were able to engage those tank destroyers and knock them all out. No doubt with Panzer, Panzer Fausts. And such, so they are they are gone, and these are gone. So the Germans have two trophies and the or two two medals, and the um, so the Germans have scored one medal, and the the Allies have scored two. So I'm just going to put them there to remind me, uh, and. Uh, significant losses to the Germans already, but they have now got this mortar team. The mortar team. Uh, was able to fire mortar straight into this uh, area here um, and inflict a casualty. So uh, there we go. Yeah, those mortars are, are it's quite a nice, simple little rule, the mortars. I like that. So super eventful. Uh, the Germans rolled these panzers down the road and were able to knock out a couple of the half tracks here. So they are now removed. But the Americans opened up with their anti-tank guns and knocked out a couple of the panzer there. So they are now going to be removed. So really, yeah, really some, some evocative drama. You can imagine this snowy landscape here on this road and the panzers coming down the road and uh, stopping and firing at the half tracks, only for the Americans to return fire with the anti-tank placements in this sort of built up area here on this crossroads. Really quite dramatic, quite evocative. Then in addition to that, uh, we've had some small losses here in this wooded area here as the Germans are trying to advance across this road here. This this section here is very well defended by the Americans. And then conversely though, this area here, there's no, Ameri no Allied troops whatsoever. The Germans have been able to exploit on that and start to move their, move their troops, their infantry, round here so that the Americans are going to have to fight both both on this front, if you will, and also to their flank as well. So super dramatic turn of events. The uh, start with the Allies. So the Americans were able to pull an air power card, and because I'm playing the game solo, I'm using sort of my own solo card pulling method. It's very similar to a lot of methods people use, and they pulled this card and were able to use it. And because of the winter conditions, normally if you're pulling an air power card, you can roll two battle dice per hex of four um but in the winter conditions it's only one dice which is quite quite uh, historically relevant and, and flavorsome and they were able to to inflict some significant casualties on these panzers which were over here and infantry not knocking them out completely but inflicting casualties the germans then pulled a uh, let me find it here the armor assault card which is a great card for them because they were able to use four armor units, one, two, three, four, 
um, and unleash the panzers. Um, and in doing so, the panzers were able to knock out the remaining half tracks. So they are removed. So there's a there's a medal there for the for the Germans for that. They were able to knock out the anti-tank guns, which had previously been inflicting significant casualties on them before. So there's another medal there for those. Um, and were able to inflict some heavy losses in this built-up area here where the Americans had been dug in, still holding on. So previously I felt like the Americans had got the upper hand, but now, in, ter in terms of medals, the Germans are leading, and I think they've got the panzers in a good place. But, but, there are a couple of these panzer units here that are just down to one last panzer. I forgot to move that with that. Um, down to the last panzer apiece in terms of the gameplay mechanics. Um, so And there's these anti-tank guns here lining up very nicely for there if they can get the right cards. Then we've got still got some American Shermans, I think, at this point uh, in, in, in the battle, these would have been Shermans. Still some, two groups of Shermans, though. If they can pincer together... It can be rolling a lot of dice, but conversely, we've got these panzers here. So, quite, uh, quite proving that to be quite a dramatic and close battle, which is great. So, more drama. The uh, Germans moved their panzers up and engaged the Shermans at range uh, and were able to inflict a casualty. The Shermans did exactly the same thing and were able to push the panzer back and inflict a casualty as well. So, it's a fairly good standoff between these two groups here. This side, the um, these panzers, a larger formation of panzers, were able to f move in front of the weaker formation to screen them from these anti-tank guns, but in doing so, suffered horrific casualties um, from from these anti-tank emplacements here within this this uh, built-up area. And then they were uh, the Germans were able to defeat with one one unbelievably lucky die roll the last remaining infantry out out of this built up area here so these now two hexes don't have any allied occupants in them the germans have got some infantry in this tree line here across this open expanse um they have been able to though move because of this exposed flank here the germans have been able to exploit on that and again move some infantry um, into this into this back area here, um, and we'll be able to start to engage with the right cards. Engage these uh, these allies in this in this woods here. So, really dramatic. And um, in terms of medals, the Germans have four, and the Allies have two. And I'm just double checking. The, yes, the rules are the first to six. So the Germans only need to get two more medals. And they will have taken the game. However, saying that, there are quite a few German units here. One, two, three. Three panzer. And one in infantry here. Although it's probably out of range. Three, these three panzers here against these anti-tank guns. Though the anti-tank gun would have no line of sight to this unit here. But to these two, certainly will have. And we need to... The Allies need to bring these Shermans up. And make good on this emplacement here. And really, need either side needs to push through on this... On this, uh, as we look at the camera, this left flank here. So the uh, where do we start? The Germans were able to fire their Panzers and knock out one of the anti-tank emplacements from this uh, built-up area here, and they were able. They rushed their elite uh, infantry right up to this into this wooded section here and engaged the Allied. Uh, were able to inflict one casualty there. Conversely, the the uh, allies rolled in there. They got the armor assault card, so they were able to roll in their tanks, the Sherman, and knock out the all the remaining tanks from this hex. So that's a victory. That's a sorry a uh, a medal for the allies there. And very fierce fighting between these two tank. Uh, Opposing tank forces here, both sides losing one piece aside. So um, they have technically the upper hand because they're elite, so they've got 
of that, but um, it still feels like the, the game could go either way. Um, we still have these two here for these, this anti-tank gun to n try and knock these out. These Shermans are going to move out of the way um, so, that they have, so that they have line of sight. Um, this area here still to fight with, and this, this area now block completely belongs to the Germans, and the Germans are making good on advancing and taking over these areas here. So that was the last uh, turn, as it were. The Germans have won. They were able, through un unbelievable die rolling, um, the Germans were able to knock out all three of these panzers um, and therefore take a, take a medal for that. And they were able to knock out these last Shermans here and take out a medal for that, which would give them the six medals that they need to to succeed. So these would have been taken out. I, I then did a extra turn for the Americans, just even though the battle was lost at that point, just to see with that clear line of sight now, this anti-tank gun took out this last panzer and these infantry here with their anti-tank weaponry that they would have had bazookas and the such knocked out the last panzer there. But even so, that still would have been only five medals um, to the six that the Germans had achieved. So the German, it was a victory for the Germans. You can imagine masses of burning tank hulks littered the battlefield in these areas. Very fierce fighting between the two sides. But the Germans were just able to take the crossroads and overrun as these um, infantry now had clear access through especially if you've got, already got German infantry behind the American lines here. So that was a um, a quick... This game like takes less than an hour to play. Um, takes uh, a quick play-in, sort of fast and furious uh, scenario. I really enjoyed it. As you can tell, a lot of drama. It could have gone either way. Um, and it's just a... It's, this is, Memoir 44 is a great, fun war gaming light experience where you just want to move some toy soldiers around on the battlefield roll some dice it's got enough historical flavor especially with the expansion packs for me and i like the base game don't get me wrong um but with the expansion pack this winter this is probably mostly down to its theme probably my favorite expansion pack normally this time of year i'd be reaching for a bulge game you know rdn 44 or um, Enemy Action Arden, or Bitter Woods, or FAB The Bulge, something of that sort of complexity. But th the truth is, because I've been playing a lot of Napoleonics games, I haven't had time to set a massive game up and do this. So I wanted something I could play, set up and play in an evening, and have a, just a bit of fun, and um, have a sort of a, a, a fierce battle between two sides, quite asymmetrical, quite different, different roles on either side, but it has got enough historical flavour to have a fun, enjoyable, historical war game uh, battle that definitely this is fulfilled. So yeah, a lot of fun. Um, really enjoyed myself. Um, and um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. As ever, I have reviewed this, um, so I'll put a link in the in this in the header. So if you want to see my review on this, exp I think this is a great expansion pack. But you do have to, and I've said it in my review. You need to get the winter board as well. This sometimes this is in available, sometimes it's not. For me, for me anyway, because then it's the aesthetic of the battlefield, which looks great with the winter board and all the winter tiles that you get in the in the Winter Wars expansion. So yeah, a lot of fun. I um, hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching, as ever. Oh, I'm probably I should probably also mention this is probably one of the last videos I'll do before the end of the end of the year. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. What I'm going to get to the table next. Um, got a few days off with the you know with the family over the Christmas break, so. I'll have to uh, have a look through my shelf and see what to, what game to get to the table next. But I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm almost tempted to do another one of these games. Um, that's how much I enjoyed it. So, yeah, thanks again for watching. Thank you.